Welcome everybody to the opening webinar today. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, performance solutions for RAID and iSCSI targets with ESXi 5. Um, to save some time here, I've actually already configured an array, so we'll talk about the settings and, uh, with and without the BBU and with the UPS. Uh, we will look at the iSCSI target in the OpenE web interface and discuss its options as well. Uh, we'll tune the SCST parameters from the DSS console and also do the same thing on the VMware side to its software initiator. And if everybody's ready, we'll get underway. If you have any questions during this, feel free to just type them in the chat window. We'll try to address them as we go along, or we can address them at the end. Um, and as a reminder, this is, once again, voice over IP and the net viewer session only. There's no teleconference number for this one. Uh, yes, this will be recorded and it will be available on our website. Uh, probably about a week before it'll get updated, uh, maybe sooner. Um, in the typical, you know, our library where all the web, rest of the webinars are on our website, like I said. <clears throat> all right, so first let's talk about, if everybody can see this here, the Mega Raid Storage Manager. Um, I'm connected to an Intel server here. So it's a LSI based controller. And you can see on the screen, I've got two arrays configured. Um, one is a uh, RAID 0, which is just plain old RAID 0 for nothing in particular, um, and a RAID 5 to show the performance settings here. And depending upon your RAID controller, these options will be in different places. Um, and you can see here on the screen, the read-only screen here is how I've got things set up currently with the write-back policy, the write policy, access policies, uh, and so forth. And to change these in this particular controller, um, it's just a right-click on the virtual drive and set the virtual drive properties. Now, this particular card here does not have a BBU. Um, it is important that you do have one for obvious reasons, power failures, uh, machine shutdown, stuff like that. You wouldn't want to have any data loss. Um, my particular storage, the SSV6 here, is connected to a UPS, so I'm okay here without the BBU for temporarily anyway. Um, the read policies on the array, as you can see here, there are only two options on this particular controller, no read ahead or always read ahead. Um, some of them have the option of adaptive. Um, always read ahead is what we've seen performs better. Um, if you only have the adaptive option, then that would be the one you'd want to choose. Um, the write policy is write back with BBU or always write back. Um, in my case, I can choose always write back. I have no BBU, but like I mentioned, I have UPS here. So some sort of fail safe here is, of course, what you want to do. IO policy would be cached IO. Um, access policy, of course, read write. Um, the local disk cache policy is enabled in this case. This gives us the ability to take advantage of caching throughout the system, and we'll talk about target caching here momentarily as well. <clears throat> um, this array is already completely initialized, so we can go ahead and move on over to the DSS web interface. These options can also be managed from the DSS web GUI from setup menu and then hardware RAID. Um, if your controller has the options available here, you'll see them. Um, in my case, we're using uh, the logical disk one here, my RAID 5. And let the screen refresh here. But as you can see, the same settings will come through that we were just looking at through the Mega RAID Storage Manager, the read policy, access policy, cache policy, and so forth. Um, in this particular case, my read policy also shows adaptive here, um, while we don't see it in the Mega Raid Storage Manager. 
this is due to the fact that this is an Intel OEM LSI card. If it were a regular PCI install on a regular LSI card, adaptive, I believe, is also available. Um, read ahead forces it, so it's usually the better option. And you'll see here the notice about if you don't have the BBU and you can uncheck this box so we can force right back onto the controller. Um, the iSCSI target itself also has the ability to cache um, for right back caching and this utilizes system RAM. Um, this can speed up performance in most instances. It's not advisable to use that setting um, you'll see it here, the right back checkbox on the LUN. You wouldn't, if you're in a failover situation, you wouldn't want to use this option, the WB option right here. Um, if there is a failover event while using the right back caching on the LUN, you could experience data loss here. Um, to activate this or deactivate this, you have to activate or deactivate the LUN change your option and then reactivate the LUN again. Um, pretty straightforward. Again, to mention here that in a failover scenario, you do not want to do this. It's not advisable. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. The, there are more parameters that can be adjusted on the target via the console screen. And you can either SSH into the console, CLI in your administrative password or physical access at the console. Um, from this screen, it's a Control-Alt-W. It brings you to the tools. And then tuning options. And here it is iSCSI daemon options. And then target options. And this will list all the targets that you have configured in the system so far. You choose a target here, and then you're brought to the list of parameters that can be adjusted here. What you're seeing on the screen right now are the default settings. Um, each one of these can be adjusted to higher values or different values, and the same thing can be changed on the VMware side. Um, these parameter changes that we're going to go through here it's a good idea to always make the same adjustments on the initiator. Uh, if you don't, the system will honor the lowest common denominator in the, in the iSCSI connection. And if the initiator has lower values, those are the ones that will be adopted regardless of what you have put in here. Um, we know that this works very well with VMware. It works well with Zen, Hyper-V. Um, Microsoft doesn't have these same options although you can change some of them here and they are honored on the Microsoft side because it will take the default broadcast options from the target in some respects. So what you want to do is select the option you want to modify here, um, click enter and it gives you the ability to change this. Now, like I said, these are the defaults and we're going to change them to what we feel is nice maximums here to use for performance. So the data segment length, we can actually change this to 262144, all right, and then just apply that. And you'll notice here that this will reset the iSCSI connections from the initiator on each change here. So doing this would either require a scheduled downtime or pause the hosts. Um, not unusual to go ahead and bring the host down so that you can make changes on the storage side as well as the initiator and then just reconnect. Um, in my case, it's connected right now. I don't mind if it resets. VMware 5 has a tendency to hunt until it finds it again, so we're okay. I don't have this in production, so not worried about I.O. at the moment. So we'll make that change, apply it. It'll restart the SCST stack. Okay, you can see it confirmed success. And now we can go on and change the rest of them here. Max burst length, let's see, that's 
going to get considerably larger as well. What we're doing here is changing packet sizing, queue depth, et cetera, stuff like that to kind of open up the flow here a little bit. This can go to 167761.92, uh, quite an increase over the default. Apply this one as well. Give it a second to update here. <clears throat> Okay, go on down the list here, max XMIT data segment. And this can go to 262144 also. And these values, by the way, are in our knowledge base. They're also, they've been in our forum. It's been discussed. Um, if you need to have them emailed to you, you know, go right ahead and submit a support ticket if you like. Um, we'd be glad to do that. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, this webinar is being recorded, so it will be available for everyone here shortly. Uh, first burst link. Six five five three six. Okay, data digest. Uh, it doesn't need to be changed. None is an appropriate value. Max outstanding R two T. This one deals with the queue depth and it can have a considerable impact on performance. Uh, the default here is one, of course, because not most all initiators default to one in the beginning, but we want to change this to eight. Um, you can experiment with different values. My experience shows eight works very, very well. Um, I have seen users with settings as high as 16 here. Um, don't know if there's been much of a difference at 16, but like I mentioned, eight seems to do pretty well. And confirm this and let it update as well. <clears throat> Initial R2T. This one we actually want to change to no. Apply that. And I can see if someone's asking here, are there similar settings for the fiber channel? That depends on the HBA you're using. Um, and there are some tuning options for fiber channel in the queue. Um, as well, correct Q logic. There are there are some driver adjustments you can make. Um, on the next release of uh, version six, you'll be able to make some of those adjustments from the console. Um, some of the adjustments are already set to the maximum for fiber, and then they can take place. The adjustments can take place on the initiator side. That's when it's in target mode. <clears throat> We will probably do a separate webinar to deal with uh, performance issues and fiber channel as we move forward. Okay. Immediate data. Uh, we want to change this to yes. A header digest of none is fine that way, and w threads at eight is fine with the setting that it has right now as well. 
So now we can back out of this. And in this case, the target I'm, we're dealing with here is VSS source dot target one. Um, typically you would adjust all of your targets so that they all have the exact same settings because the initiator would be the same. Um, depending upon how you're using VMware. Um, in my case, I'm attaching the data stores at the topmost level instead of at each individual virtual machine. So they would be adjusted in only one place. Um, VMware 5 has the ability to adjust each data store independently, but the other option is to take the parent settings of the initiator and just spread it across each connection, which is what I've done here. Okay, back out all the way to the beginning here. Now, if we take a look at the vSphere side, VMware side, um, <clears throat> you can see I've got all my targets are attached and we want to adjust the initiator here. And this is the same in ESX 4 and 4.1 and 5. Um, the options are still here. So the easiest way to do this, I can just right click on the adapter, go to properties. And first comes up with these, these tabs that you see here on the screen. And before I go on to the initiator settings, I want to talk a little bit about the static discovery here. Um, we recommend using static discovery on the targets, um, particularly if there are two nodes in failover. Dynamic discovery will have a tendency to find every single IP that's on the storage unit and want to attach to it. And if you're in a failover situation, that can be dangerous because it can attach to IPs that are not the virtual IPs for failover. And in a failover event, you would lose connectivity or end up with data corruption because the initiator would for a moment be connected to both nodes during a failover event and would lead to inconsistent data on the nodes. So what we recommend, like I said, is a static discovery here. And you, it's pretty obvious. You can just click add IP that you want to use for your iSCSI traffic and the target name, any chap user authentication you've set up and just add it to the list here. Now back to the initiators options. Um, that's under the advanced options for the initiator. And as you can see here, everything that we're allowed to change is opened up. And header digest, um, as I mentioned before, the value is none, so prohibited. Um, data digest is also set to none, so it's prohibited. These are two default settings here, actually. Um, as we go down the list here, you can see max outstanding R2T. And again, like I mentioned before, the default for most all initiators is always one. So you want to try to go here to eight, which in VMware 5 is the maximum. On 4.0 and 4.1, I think as well as in Hyper-V, you can go as high as 16. First burst length here, we want to change to match what we added on the DSS side, and let's see, that was uh, 65536. And you can see it can actually go higher. So if you want to try higher values, you know, go right ahead. Um, like I said, I think the 65536 number works out very well. Some of these we are going to push up to the maximum by default anyway. Um, first burst length is we're going to go ahead and go to the maximum. So it's one six, well, almost the maximum, one six, seven, seven, six, one, nine, two. Um, let's see here. Uh, Receive data segment length, two, six, two, one, four, four. On down the list here. And you can see here that 
the immediate data is already set, initial R2T is already set, and these of course already equal what we have on the DSS side. The delayed ACK option here allows VMware to wait for acknowledgement from the storage side instead of looking for it immediately. So this allows for some flexibility on, on the stabilization of the connection. So we can OK out of that, close out of the advanced option. And here, all you got to have to simply do is just refresh it, and it takes on these settings automatically. There's no need to disconnect from the data store and reconnect. <clears throat> if you're concerned if the options are being applied, you can see that if you download the log package um, from DSS v6, you can look at the dmessage logs and see the connectivity and what values are being used. Um, the fastest and easiest thing to search for there is the max outstanding R2T value of eight. And you'll see the rest of the parameters that are being pushed through there. And to get the logs, status hardware. And you can download the log package right here to double check if you'd like. As I mentioned earlier, with the BBU options and the UPS, you can see here I'm connected to a UPS system so that the forcing the right back on the RAID controller I'm okay with on this machine. And do we have any questions? If you guys have questions, feel free to go ahead and just type them in the chat window. Yeah, I apologize for that. We didn't, I didn't use the teleconference line on this one. It was voice over IP only. Um, apologize for that, but you will be able to download it. Um, when there are two SANs and failover here, you would want to make these adjustments on each SAN um, before there is a failover event. So you'd want to take them down and make all these adjustments equally between the two nodes. Um, most SAN appliances have the ability to make these adjustments, um, particularly if they're using SCST and OpenISCSI. These options should be available um, either through an interface that that company may have created or through uh, the config files in Etsy directory if it's a Linux-based system, iSCSI.comp, I believe it's called. Yes, even using SSD cache, these settings will still help. Um, while the cache bumps performance immensely, this will also help um, performance between VMware and the target. The specifications of this storage is uh, LSI RAID controller, no SSD cache, uh, and RAID 5, just about just over three and a half terabytes at the moment. Um, we actually do have a webinar already on in our library in the webinar section about um, LSI and its settings for Cascade. So if you want to check that out, there is a video on that already. Um, this will work with any RAID card. The optional, the option settings I've showed here um, is what we have found works very well with LSI and with some feedback from LSI, their recommendations as well. But the cache policies and the write policies and disk cache policies should be available on any controller. The uh, RAID card that's used here is not 
terribly relevant to the SCST and target tuning values. That's more internal to the operating system and the SCST connecting engine. Um, I wanted to show some RAID setup here just so that uh, you would have an idea of which direction to go in tuning the RAID card itself. 